Welcome to Selaxi Educational Services. Today we are going to look at redox titration, chemistry YA 2024. And the sample, the solution A, solution A is potassium tetra oxo manganese 7. Y B is giving us ion 2 tetra of surface 6. Now, these are the two solutions that will be given to us that day. Now, the first one is actually an oxidizing agent. An oxidizing agent. Why the second one, which is solution B, is a reducing agent. Now, in this redox titration, we were asked to measure 1.58 gram of KMN O4 and make it up to 1 dl cube of distilled water. While we are also asked to measure 5.5 gram of ion 2 surface and make it up to 1 dm cube of distilled water. Now, this is very, very simple. I can, as well, get the concentration of the A, which is potassium permanganate, and get the concentration of the B, which is iron sulfate. Now, if I'm, what, if I'm calculating the concentration using my paperwork, it will be 1.58 gram, all right, divided by the molar mass of KMNO4. So we have 158, which is the molar mass of KMNO4. Dividing it, we have we have 0 0.0100 more per dm cube. Then another one is concentration of B. If I want to know the concentration of B, it will be 5.5 gram. This gram per mole. All right. All over 152 gram per mole. So what do you have? 0 0.036. 0 0.036. 0, 0, 0 more per dm cube. Now, okay, this one, that means approximately to 2 per dm cube. Now, why I'm saying per dm cube, I'm supposed to leave it as more. I made it up to 1 dm cube of distilled water, which is the standard, okay? Now, this is actually the concentration we are going to be having that day. It will be within this range. It might not be exactly this range, but will be within this range for concentration of A and for concentration of B. So you have it this range. Now, having known this, this is the rough work we are going to be doing. Now, after, um, in redox titration, all right, the equation of the reaction is represented by ionic form, by ionic form. Of course, it is always acidified all right, we dilute HSO4, all right, for the redox reaction to take place. Now, in acidifying it, for instance, the KMNO4, the ionic form is MNO4, all right, then plus the ion 2 sulfate, all right. First of all, this is actually balanced, but I wouldn't go ahead to balance it. Now, if I acidify it by H plus here, it will give me this will reduce to Mn2 plus plus this will oxidize to Fe3 plus and then this of course will react with oxygen to give you water. Now at the end of the day, oxygen here is four, here is one, you add four here, the hydrogen becomes four. Now you see that potassium permanganate has reduced from plus seven to what plus two. While ion have oxidized from plus two 
to plus 3. Is that okay? Now, the one that is reducing is actually the oxidizing agent. Why the one that is oxidizing is actually the reducing agent. Now, if you want to calculate the electron, electrons that we gain, all right, it's actually 5. So, the balance equation will look like 5 here and 5 here. All right, I don't want to go into details on how this is given. But on that very day, this is the kind of equation we will see. All right. So the mole ratio of this to this will be 1 is to 5. Now let's go straight to the question. Now, this is the question. A is a solution of potassium permanganate and B is a solution of ion 2, tetras of a 6 containing 2.75 gram of the salt in 500 cm cube of solution. YC is a solution of 1.0 mole per cm cube of H2SO4. Now, the questions are A. Put A, that is solution A, into the burette and pipette 20.0 cm cube or 25.0 cm cube of B into a conical flask. All right? And of course, they will give us solution C. Solution C is a solution of one molar concentration of H2SO4. So they will ask you to add 1.0 mole per dm cube, about 10 cm cube of 1.0 mole per dm cube of H2SO4 and titrate it with, with A. Now, this acid solution will be added to the ion in the conical flask. Then, they will ask you to, of course, repeat the titration to obtain a um, concordant value. Then you tablet your result and calculate the average volume of A. Now, the equation of the reaction is this way. All right. So this is actually 5M. And this is 5M. Then from your results and information provided, calculate the concentration of B in mole per dm cube. Concentration of A in mole per dm cube. The amount of ion 2 ion, ion 2 ion in the volume of B prepared. And the molar mass of ion sulfate is given. This is actually solution B. It's light green in color. This is solution A. All right, solution A is potassium permanganate is purple in color, okay? While solution B, which is ion sulfate, is light green in color. Then this is my dilute tetras of a 6 acid. All right. I've already poured the... This is the titration apparatus. I've already poured the uh, potassium permanganate to my burette. Then I will prepare my iron sulfate. All right, watch me as I do it. Very simple. You in a slab position, you suck. You should be very careful so that I don't drink it. So I want to calibrate it to the mark on the pipette. Of course, we are using 25.00 CNQ pipette. So that is the mark. It's there. So this is the... Oh, it has gone down. Don't be tensed. Relax and do it. Release your hands so that it goes down to the mark. Wow. That is the mark. That's the mark. This is my washed conical flask. I put it in to so discharge into it. All right. Then I measure 10 ml of the acid, which will be given to you that day as solution C. To be given to you on that day as solution C. Still remaining small. Wow. So that is my 10 me. You read from the lower meniscus. Lower meniscus, eye level. That's my 10 me. All right. 
Make sure that every content in the pipette is discharged into the conical flask. You touch the tip. You put it back. This way. Put it back this way. Hang it gently. All right. We are ready for our titration. So I pour it into this. The essence of having diluted CSO4 is to prevent oxidation of the ion 2 to ion 3 and also to speed up the redox, okay? The titration. So I titrate. Now you watch as I titrate. You watch as I titrate. Now this is purple in color. When it touches the ion 2 sulfate, when it touches the ion 2 sulfate, the purple color disappears, dechlorizes. Okay. Now, as it's going into ion 2 sulfate, a time will come where there will be much, um, where the ion uh, potassium permanganate will be much into the solution. So it begins to oxidize the ion 2. So let me titrate. Watch as I do. It disappears. Can you see? Can you all see? Wow. Keep swelling in. Wow. Be careful so that it doesn't spill on the conical flask. Be watchful when it will change to pink. Permanent pink. Wow. Now, if there are any purple staining on the on the side of the conical flask use the still water to wash it down the still water is neutral it will not interfere it will not interfere is that okay let's go there wow keep disappearing wow wow Wow. Let me wash down these pills. It's still disappearing, still dechlorizing. The ion 2 sulfate is dechlorizing the purple color of the potassium permanganate. Mm. That's turned pink, right? That's a pink color. That's a pink color. Then, on standing, it will oxidize to ion 3. On standing, it will oxidize towards ion 3. So, this is the one I've done before. This is the one I just did. This is the pink. This is the end color change, and this is the end point. On standing, Oxidizes to ion 3. Now, in this practical, you can observe when I started, I didn't use any indicator. Why I didn't use indicator is because the potassium permanganate is colored, it's purple in color, so it is self indicating. You don't need an indicator, it is self indicating, so you don't need an indicator. 